Hello everyone, this is Moon and Raghavan. Today we are going to see the main topic in PyTest called fixtures. So what is fixtures and why do we need that and what are the benefits out of the fixtures? Fixtures in PyTest. Generally fixtures will be used when, let's say you want to execute some setup activities before each method or class or module. And you want to execute some teardown activities after the each method or the class or the module. Actually you will be using the teardown method or the teardown activities by using the keyword called yield. If you are known about the generators, you might be knowing about the yield. But however, in PyTest, we are using the yield keyword to do the teardown activities. Then after we will be getting the data for the test cases. And in some cases, we will be doing the data parameterization by using the, let's say, fixtures. So fixtures could be centralized via conf test.py. What does it mean? For example, if you want to create some fixtures, let's say, in case of setup activity or in case of data parameterization, whatever may be the case, if you want to do that activity, you will be creating the fixtures inside your test class or uh, let's say in your module. But however, these fixtures will be only available to your current module. It may not be available for the other module. But in some cases, your setup activity is common for all the test cases. That time you will go with the file called contest.py so that if you are writing the fixtures inside your contest.py, it will be available all your test cases under that folder. Okay, fine. So let's jump into the demo and understand. So just go here and you can see here, there are two classes available. One is contest.py and the test class fixture.py. So this is the class I will be having the different test methods or the test cases. For example, contest we will go. So we will try to create the fixtures. First and foremost thing, we need to import the module called PyTest. Obviously we need to use the different kinds of decorators for the fixtures. In order to create the fixture, the decorator name is called at pytest.fixture. Wherever you are creating the fixture, you will be using this decorator, fine. Then after we are going to create the method. Here one point to be noted is, it is a fixture, it's not the test case. So we don't need to follow the naming convention of the PyTest. Okay, fine. So here we are creating one method, conf underscore setup. And after that, we are going to write the statements which are to be executed before each test case or each method or each class. Now I am telling each method or class or let's say module. So how can you differentiate? In general, PyTest.fixture have the default scope called scope is equal to method. Whether you mention it or not, so it will be available to you. By default, it will be method. So that means that if you don't write anything, it will be executed for all your methods, fine. But in case if you want to execute some fixtures for the class level, that time you will be writing the same code. For example, here at pytest.fixture, then scope is equal to class. That means that this statement will be executed before and after for every class. That means that in your model, if you have one class, then it will be executed only once the before class and after the class. Then what about the yield? We have seen the yield keyword will be used to create the teardown code activities. So what do you mean by teardown? As you know that some activities will be done before the method and some activities will be done after the method. So in order to differentiate these things, we don't have separate method or separate fixture in the PyTest. So we'll be using the yield keyword. So what are the code you are writing before the yield keyword? Those things will be executed before your test case or whatever the scope it may be. Then after whatever the statement you are writing after the yield keyword that will be executed after your method in case of your scope is method. Fine. So this is the two ways we have seen. Actually we have seen the scope of class and we have seen the scope of method because here default scope is method. And in the same time we can have the scope of module as well. For example, if it is a module, then it will be executed before your module starts and after your module completes. And it's totally optional. Let's say if you want to write only the teardown method, then you will not write anything before the yield. So you will directly write the yield, then you will be writing the statements only for the teardown method. Now, the teardown or setup methods are fine. Then after we are going to get the data. So what is data? Here you will be writing the fixture again, the method name, and here you are directly returning the method. Here I am returning the tuple. So here I am just returning, let's say Python user password under python at demo.com, fine. But it will be written only once and your test case will get this data just to use only one time. But in case of if you want to do the data parameter session, for example, you have the login screen and you want to check for the different users. So that time you will be using the username and password. So in this case, I'm just creating one JSON or dictionary, which will have the user and password. Like this, I have created three JSON or three dictionaries so that you will have the three type of or three set of data. So every time this will be returning one set of JSON to your method. How can you mention? So here you can see line number 28, data provider request. 
So request is the predefined object available to your fixtures. Then after request dot param. So here you can see the input, let's say argument name or the parameter. It is a params, but you are returning a param. That means that every time whichever the fixture, uh, sorry, whichever the test case is calling this fixture, it will be getting one param at a time. So that means that you will be getting at a time, you will be getting one JSON. So that you will be executing the test case will be three times. Okay, this is only the creation of the fixtures. We are going to see the test cases. So here it's clear. So now we will go to the test cases. So as you see here, I have just three decorators here. Whereas here, you have seen the decorator called at pytest fixture. But here I'm going to use the fixture. That's why it is called at pytest mark dot use fixtures. So that means I'm going to use the three fixtures, class fixture, config setup and data. It is nothing but the method name what you mentioned in your fixtures. Okay, fine. Then after I'm going to use the data parameter session, not for all the test cases, but for only one test case. That's why I'm not defining at the class level. So that means that these three decorators will be applicable for all the methods available inside your class test demo. But whereas here, this will be applicable only for your current method because I'm going to use the data provider or the parameter session only for this one. Fine, so we'll go each method one by one. So how can you tell this is the test case? You can see the naming convention is test demo. And after that, each method will start the test underscore. That means that all methods are test cases. Fine. Then after this have only self because it is inside the class. Okay, fine. Then it will be applicable for the class picture and config setup, but it will not be applicable for the data. Why mean? Because if you see the conf setup, there is no return statement. If you see the let's say class picture, there is no return statement. Obviously, yield and return methods are like mutually exclusive. If it is yield is there, return will not be there. But in case of if you are getting the data, wherever you are getting the data, there will be a statement called return. Right? So this is the point you to be noted. Then after, wherever you are going to use the data by using the fixture, that time explicitly you need to mention your variable name or let's say your fixture name. Here I'm going to use the data fixture, so I'm mentioning here data. Here in this case, I'm going to use the data provider fixture, so I'm mentioning the data provider name here. If you see here, you can see clearly here, this is the name of the data provider method and this is the name for your data. Fine, so now we will go inside again. So now I have to explicitly mention the name in case if I am returning something from the picture, in order to access the returned data or the parameterized data, I need to mention that name explicitly. Fine, this is fine. So class test three method three execution. Then after, since the data having only one time activity, you can see here, just I'm sending only one tuple, but in order to access the tuple, I'm using the index here. So data zero, one, two, fine. But here I'm just returning the dictionary, right? So I'm returning every time one dictionary. So in order to access the dictionary, you know that you need to give the key. So I'm giving the key user and pass, but however, I'm using only one time, but this data will be executed three times. Why? Because we are sending three dictionaries here and we are sending request.param, not params. So that means that out of this params, every time you will be sending one parameter. So that's the reason at first time you will be getting user one and password one and second time you will get the user two and password two and third time you will be getting user three and password three. And one more thing we can notice here, it is con setup by default. This statement will be executed before each method of your class. For example, you have, let's say three, four. So you, this method will be executed before each method and this statement will be executed after each method. Fine. In case of class scope, this statement will be executed only once for your class. And you can see in your model, you have only one class. That means that this statement will be executed only once before your class starts and it will be executed only once after your class ends. So this is the understanding. So now we will go to here and we know the different ways to execute the your PyTest case. Now I'm going to execute through your PyCharm. So just click on this. Already I make the configuration. Fine, here, here you can see the output. The first statement actually before class setup. So that means that before class setup done only once before the class starts and you can see at the bottom after class setup will be executed only once. Then after as we discussed earlier, so config before setup will be executed for each method. For example, you can see here. So before setup, after setup done, and after that before setup, then after setup done, class two method three completed and method three before setup and after setup done. And we are getting the data as well. It is a, it is having the decorator of data. So that's why we are getting only once. But however, in case of, let's say, 
params so that time you are getting three times for example here you can see data provider 0 data provider 1 and data provider 2 so we have three set of data and each time it is sending user 1 password 1 user 2 password 2 and user 3 password 3 so this is the way it will execute and we have seen totally what are the different things we can come to know for example we have seen how to create the fixtures and how to centralize in the conf test.py in order to create the decorator sorry in order to create the fixture you need to use the decorator at pytest.fixture by default the scope will be method in case if you want at class level you can mention explicitly scope is equal to class then we have seen the params inside your fixture so params will be sending your data multiple times simple words it can be the data parameterization the same time you can return the data as well and we can return the data and we can access in the data by explicitly mentioning your test case then after we have seen what is yield keyword yield and return are mutually exclusive we have seen yield keyword will be used to in order to differentiate between the before setup and after setup or after teardown activities in test case we have seen how to mention the decorators at the class level and how to mention the decorator only for the method level so this data provider is mentioned at method level so this data will not be available to other things in case if you mention at the class level so this data provider will be available for all these four methods then it will execute four into two it will be eight times so fine so this is the understanding about the fixture so thank you thanks for watching have a great day